In this video, we are going to be making a stream transition. Now, this is not only useful for streams or if you're a streamer, but it's also useful if you want to use them on your own YouTube videos as a way to transition from one scene to another. Okay, now, who is this video for? Streamers, first of all, if you want to stream and create your own uh, set of transitions, then it will be video editors or creators if you want to add a special touch to your content. And third, if you like to build stuff and create templates and want to make money off of them, then this is a pretty cool way of doing so. If you already have an established audience in that space, could be useful or marketplaces, uh, websites where you can sell your own templates and stuff that you built. Although the main thing is not about creating them. If you're creating them to sell, it's about the marketing part. So if you want, I could make a video of that since I do have templates so I can talk about the marketing of that if you want me to. But yeah, in this video, I will show you how to create those and I will give you, uh, I think, five or six fusion compositions so that you can edit them and alter them because each, pretty much each of them have a few different variations that you might be able to quickly adapt. So in total, it could be like 10 or 15 of the counting if you count the different variations. So yeah, let's just get started right away. So the first thing that we need to do is actually create a fusion composition. If you don't have already have one, I'm just going to copy and paste this one here and we're going to go into this one and we are actually going to just delete all of these things. In this case, I'm using an uploader node. So then you can easily add your own logo. If you want to know about that uploader node, you can go. I do have another video of that. You can check it out there. OK, now in this case, what we're going to do is we are going to build build a little element that sort of closes in like curtains, I guess, from each side and then a few elements popping up and then the logo also showing up and then it all goes back to normal. All right. Add a background node first and also another one. Why are we going to use two? Because we're going to have two different sort of like folding areas. Then we're going to add a rectangle mask and we're going to increase the height to one and then bring the center to 0.25 for one side for the left side. And then we're going to bring we're going to copy and paste that rectangle there. Actually, I do have an idea. In order to make this faster, we're going to use do the animation from one side first and then we're going to copy and paste that and then reverse it. So it's basically doing two things at once. Now, for the we can actually change the color of these background. If you want, you can change its type too. It's really up to you in this case. I'm just going to use these sort of like, yeah, I'm going to use this yellow one in this case. Now, OK, now that we have these, the thing first thing we need to do is we need to animate the position for that. We're going to click here. What is the center? And then at frame, let's say frame nine, since you don't want your stream transitions or your transitions at all to last way too long. So I would say I would say usually you might be between a second and two. OK, then we're going to create that second keyframe. And we're going to bring these one to the side here. We can actually just add a spline. And then we're going to select all of these and press F. Then we can press T and add adjust the ease in and out options so that the movement is a little bit smoother. Oh, I, I forgot to change this transform node. So in this case, I'm going to take out the keyframes for these and we're going to work with that later. So now that we have this one, how are we going to do what I said about changing the animation speed or side? In this case, we can just copy and paste this rectangle. Add this to this background node and then we're going to add it here. Now it's on the same side. So in order to do that, what we can do is actually we're just going to go here and see what the center here it says. In this case, it's minus minus 0.26. To take it to the other side, we simply add one. So it's going to be 1.26 and it's going to take it to the other side. If we come these to the frame nine, it's at 0 0.75, 0 0.25. And what we need to do is go to 0.75. Now we have our sort of folding curtains. I do like that yellow and black combination, but I'm going to change it a little bit more so that I can see the contrast of the background that I have here. OK, the next step would be to just add these transform here. And we can actually do a couple of different things. We can actually slide this in. We can just play around with the zoom in and zoom out option, not zoom in the size. So like it will be small. And then once it closed, it will show up here. We're going to add a keyframe at nine all the way to 16. I think will be enough. Make it big like that. 
And we can actually play around with the angle to make it a little bit interesting so that our logo is rotating. Just a little bit. There it goes. I like that. Then we can go to the spline tool, select everything as before and press F to ease them in and out. If you want, you can play around with the easing in and easing out values up here. Now, how do we make this a little bit more interesting? I think what we can do here is we are going to add a, we can add another text node and add the text here. We're going to add an X and we're going to have to change the color in this side probably so that it looks better. Make it a little bit bigger and you can choose the font that you want. I think in this case, what could be an interesting and that makes sense. I think this minimum works. Looks, uh, it looks a little bit interesting. So I think that would be fine here. What we can do is actually, we're just going to we're going to press control and space bar and we're going to add a transform node and the movement is going to be really subtle in this case too. But before we do anything, we want to click here in the middle and the press tab two times, actually three times until we have the pivot point selected. Also, you can just change it here, but I like to move it around with these so that I can actually put it in the right place because then we're able to rotate it on itself. And this works for any object that you want to rotate or do any movement with. And since we have that logo showing up right there, I want the X to move a little bit from sort of like slide up a little bit, just a tiny bit, and then rotate at the same time. We're going to start here. Going to go like frame 20. And the rotation is going to be there and it's going to rotate. Let's do 45 degrees, I think. Mm, maybe not 40, but 90. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these 90 from here and I'm going to rotate it at 24, just 180 degrees and the position will be added there too. So we have that there. And then we're going to also add the little ease in and out options to the splines here. Selecting everything and press F and then you're ready. We have that there. And what we can do is we're going to duplicate this or just copy and paste it. And then there we're copying and pasting it because in this case, we need a different contrast color for the other side. And for the transform node, we can actually just move the whole path that we have here. We can go to the modifier section and put the path here. It's not at 0.75 because the X was not at the, in the middle. So we're going to have to guess a little bit. That seems to be fine. And then on this side, we're going to add that yellow X. In this case, this is black, but we can add that same color from the other side. So we add a little bit of contrast there. There it goes. And one extra thing that I want to do is go to the merge node here and we're going to fade this in and out. So we're going to blend this in like that. Going to go around 20, 21 there and then at 20 right after it ends we're going to fade it out again and if we press f here it's going to make it smooth a little bit better and that indication for where this appears is when we're going to reverse the animation completely again so for that we're going to go to here to the transform node select everything you can press f i guess we didn't do that before we're going to start with the logo going backwards we're going to go here and choose reverse. So it's going to go out like that. And then right as it as it disappears here, we're going to go to our rectangles with both of them selected. Press this here to, so that you can see it on screen better. Selecting everything, we're going to hold control and drag this to make a copy. And we're going to reverse these like that, like that. So that will reveal the next scene afterwards. Now, one last step that we want to do is we can go here to the settings and add a motion blur to the different elements that you want. This is really up to you if you like motion blur. Uh, if you don't like it, you don't have to do this. I like it sometimes, but I like it to be really subtle. 
there's one thing that you still have to do, and that is exporting these as a video with the transparent background. To do that, first, we're going to bring our transform compos or our fusion composition to the side here because we don't want to render the other side, the other things that are there. Go to the deliver page. And then with this fusion clip selected, we can right click up here and it says render clip. And that will to select this clip. Now here in the export page, there's a couple of different things that you can do to export it with a transparent or the alpha background. In this case, we're going to go to QuickTime and then select Grass Valley. Now, if you go down a little bit, you will find the export alpha, which then you can simply add the render to queue and render it. And after you render, you're pretty much ready to use these on your streams. Now, uh, there's plenty of videos on how to add transition stingers to your OBS or the platform that you use, you use for streaming. So I'm not going to show you that process. Now, let me just show you before we finish. There's uh, five different fusion compositions that I did that I'm going to just add in the description so that you can go there and check them out and download them. Now, there's a couple of cool things here. I set these up so that you can customize them completely. And there's a few things here. If you go to this one, I added a few versions. So if you press number two, the direction of where the things are coming from is going to change. That way you don't have to animate the whole process again. And this is the case for, I think, maybe two of them since the you can also change the path and the transform here. You will see it coming from uh, I actually just edited the path of these in this case. You can do that, too. And if you want to create a new variation, you can just switch to the new version or version three and then edit any edit that you make here. You can activate it by just changing from the different versions. And yeah, it's pretty cool. You can play around with it. You can change the colors or add things or just look at them to learn and see what ideas you get from these. Now, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoy it and I will see you in the next video here in Suave. Bye.